and the second of all, the, the antisocial behaviour, is that what can we do as a community? Because I really do feel passionate about it, because right? I feel like I'm moving to a really beautiful area, and I really want to be, I really want to contribute and really do something that can make a change, but nothing can be <coughs> done. We're just screaming and screaming and screaming, but nothing's being done. Now everyone's just really in fear. So what can we do as a, as a community to make that park as well for our children, a safe place, and also, would the police, would they consider giving some kind of patrolling or something just to make us feel safe once again? Thank you. So I, I will hand this over to the Chief Inspector, but certainly if it's a new estate, I, I suspect you probably don't yet have a neighbourhood watch. Um, and that makes a huge difference. It's a, and that's something that we, as the PFCC's office, we can help you. Um, if you've got one, develop it. If you haven't got one yet, then set it up. I'm just new to all this, you know, because I wouldn't have known about this as well. Until I said, about the bin situation, my neighbour said, go and register, you'll find out when the bins are coming. And that's when I found out that we have something like this available. Oh, good. Okay. That's why well, I come down. I think that should, if that's more kind of knew about it more than, I guess, more people... Serendipitous that you actually found out about it, but uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll take that feedback as but well. If I know about it, I'll definitely will come anyway, so I'm glad I found out about it, and I'm glad I'm so we do actually have neighbourhood watch representatives here uh, who are waving at me yeah. frantically so I think they were trying to get your attention. Don't mind me batting. If you want to I can take it to my um, head person when you can join our neighbourhood watch. The more the better, as my friend, the more the merrier. Alright, thank you. Uh, and I would certainly echo that. I, uh, I moved to a new estate about four years ago, uh, other side of Essex, and uh, the first thing I did was linking with Essex Police, identify who the neighbourhood watch was, and set up a neighbourhood watch within the area that I live in. Now we've got a, um, a WhatsApp group, uh, there's a neighbourhood dedicated neighbourhood watch group, so uh, as soon as um, somebody is, so for example, they've seen a car being uh, stolen or, or a theft from, uh, uh, from a car, they post that on Neighbourhood Watch, they alert everybody to, to that and everybody straight away looking at the cameras, looking out the windows, making sure their cars are safe. So, so it is it's very, very, uh, very useful and it, it's re really a great way to stay in touch locally about what's happening. Um, from a policing point of view, what they do with the Neighbourhood Watch is we send out the, the crime statistics so you know in your area what's been reported, where, what you need to be aware of, whether or not there is uh, more theft from motor vehicles happening in your area or whether or not it's, it's thefts. So, so it keeps you, uh, in, in, it makes you aware of what's happening for you to then self-protect. So my, my job as a police officer ultimately is to prevent crime. That, that's what I want to do. Um, and the way we prevent crime is by arming you with the information around that. So uh, I, I mentioned earlier on, about uh, vehicle thefts and keyless entries. The way you can protect yourself fr from that is having a Faraday bag, making sure your vehicle, your, your key is not near the front door because uh, the signal can be boosted to, to where your car is on the driveway, for example. There's lots of, um, lots of piece of advice that we can give around different crime types that will arm you in order that you can try and prevent crime. Um, in relation to uh, the, the points that you've made, so I'll start with the vehicle crime because I've mentioned it. So vehicle crime, yes, we have seen a increase. Uh, we saw a larger increase last year than we have this year. At the moment, our vehicle crime, uh, up to um, rolling data up to December, is that we've had 13.5% increase in theft, theft of motor vehicles. Uh, in the last three months, we've had uh, real, real good proactive operations tackling that crime type and we've identified hotspot areas so where the most cars have been stolen from and flooded it with police officers and as a result of that we saw in November um, we recovered nine vehicles and, and arrested somebody who's still under investigation in December we saw a person that was charged with 26 offences the majority of those were theft, theft of motor vehicle offences so, so there is a lot of work that we're doing within Furrow to target that, that crime type and in fact over the last three months we've seen a reduction compared to three, uh, the same period last year in, 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 in uh, vehicle thefts. So um, it is certainly a priority for me, it's a priority for my community policing team, and it is something that we are tackling. Um, in relation to antisocial behaviour, um, things, that, things that you mentioned, is there anything you can do as a community? Well, antisocial behaviour have been committed by people within the community, and what, what 
a great way of tackling antisocial behaviour is, is by instilling in uh, people the values that, that this is your, your park, this is your area, you don't want to leave it in a, in a way that's going to be dangerous for your children. I recognise that not everybody shares that values. And, and there are things from a policing point of view and from the council, because it's not just a policing uh, problem, it's also a council problem uh, that we are tackling it. So if you've got uh, particular uh, uh, neighbours that don't adhere to the same values, that are causing all the problems, you need to not only report to us but report to the council because they have powers to look at if they, they are on council accommodation whether or not they're, they're causing so much problems that it's causing such misery for other, other residents whether or not is it, be, is it right for them to be there so um, it is a long process but there are powers that the council have that can address that um, so I go back to probably the first thing I said tonight and I probably said it quite a lot it's all about reporting if we don't know about it we can't, we can't tackle it so uh, to, uh, if you take anything away from this meeting tonight, say it that way and, and certainly share that with everybody, there is a way to stay in touch, so I know you mentioned about tonight, um, Essex Police, uh, Farrock District, we have a Facebook page, uh, certainly please subscribe to that, um, uh, a lot of the information around what we are doing within Farrock is on there, we have Let's, Let's Talk events, uh, our, my community safety engagement officer runs, uh, and we have that in every, um, in every ward now within, within Farrock, which is great. And those events are there for, for us to listen to the community, listen to what the issues are, your priorities are, so that we can tailor what we do within the community and, and help problem solve and help, help you, you guys. Um, policing is the community, the community is the police. So it's a two-way partnership and it's about making sure that, that we are getting the information from you and that you are then seeing us in that area tackling that problem. So um, it's definitely Facebook page, We've also got a Twitter page or an X page, I keep referring it to Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and also we have a district newsletter now that you can subscribe. If you go onto the Essex Police website and you look for the district newsletter, uh, subscribe to that. It's a weekly newsletter, it comes out. And on that newsletter, it tells you about some of the good work that we're doing within, within Farrock. We also provide some of the crime prevention advice that I mentioned around the crime types that, that we've seen increasing. So it's really, really important to arm yourself with that information. Um, uh, Burglary, for example, there's a lot of stuff that we've done around burglary um, in order to sort of educate people because there are things that, uh, that uh, people, if they're aware of, that they can take action to prevent that. Burglary is a, um, in most cases, is an opportunist crime. So uh, a, a burglar will look at, a, look at a house and look at, are there entry points that are really weak that I can get in, get out and get away? Because nobody wants to be in the house too long because if a neighbour sees them, calls the police, they're caught inside the house, that they're arrested. So um, things like, uh, if you've got a UV PVC door, um, they were a great thing when they were sold about being multi-lock, but they're only great if people actually use a multi-lock and then lock it. Uh, one of the biggest things we found certainly in, uh, when they first come out, were people were leaving it on the latch, they weren't multi-locking it. So when it's on the latch, it's very easy to force the door open. So things like that, keeping your doors, keeping your windows locked where, when you're not in the house. Um, and if you're in the house and it's of a, a night time, making sure the downstairs windows, all those easy windows to get to, are locked and closed. So, so um, please sign up to the district newsletter, um, look at the advice, it may help, help to, to, to lower the crime in Thank you very much. Thank you for the questions. Yeah, well, I think we're a little bit over the original time, but let's keep on going because uh, we still got the attention. I think I've got three questions. Well, just was trying to follow on for the drug issue that Sue said. I know in Stamford for a fact, Stamford Corringham, I can have a ticket of cocaine delivered quicker than I can a pizza. That is better, better organised than Uber Eats and everything else. It is horrific, and you look, that just pops. I have actually, we took the time as councillors, the SS17 councillors, we got the house, the registration numbers, the times, the neighbours were fantastic, and we were told we leave the little boys alone in Stamford because otherwise London will come in. I completely palmed us off and didn't want to know our information, so drugs, as I said, ticket is quicker than a pizza so you haven't got anywhere near close to solving that problem you just seem to brush brush that side and the amount of addicts we've got now is is alarming you can go down to um 
where is it, in um, Avery, there's a massive centre there where all the addicts are, since Covid it's just got massive, cocaine is a serious, serious issue and you've got no idea how big that is. So, not to be the issue at all, but can I just ask when you have that experience of not having your intelligence government? When I, well, when I first, yeah. when I first, when I was, when I was first elected, because we, we was, yeah, so probably four years ago, but we're still told, since then... Yeah, no, I've, just, just interested. But since then I've just said I'm not going to bother, because it's a risk anyway, isn't it, the following drug deal, and then when you're told, like, take a photograph of his number plate because we can't help you, or we're not interested, so I haven't bothered since then, but it is massive, so you can... If I order, if I, if I, well not here, but if I went outside and ordered a ticket of, awesome. ticket of cocaine, <laughs> I would get it before this meeting. Hang on, before we actually have arrests in the room. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just don't think, I know you haven't got any clue how big it is. Uh, Councillor, uh, well, we, we've met a number of times we and uh, certainly one of the things that I've actively <coughs> encouraged is about that reporting and if you've got that sort of information, you've got my email address. Uh, I, I mentioned ah, to you about the. I said no. I said twice. Twice. Said, 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 don't said to you the. I've got it on email. You said don't bother me. Go to the community police. So that's a lie. Councillor, let me let me finish. Do you want there to is, the email? Let's, let's not email? start being personal, okay? He's, now he told me don't bother him. Go to the community police twice. I'll oh. show you then. Councillor, as did a, you or did you not part me off? If you're not going to let me finish the question, I'm not going to answer it. If you're not answering the question, you palm me off twice. I, I, I didn't palm you off. I will answer the question. Okay, well. Right? So, I made it very clear that we have a standardised approach of how councillors approach police. That is, I've, uh, since coming into the role in um, April, uh, February last year, I've put in place a, a partnership sergeant to in, in, enhance the relationship with our CSPs, with our councillors, with our MPs. So, there's a clear now process around raising those concerns, coming into the police, and an escalation process. As I've said to you in the, in the, in the email, I made that very clear. The, the bottom line is, if you don't provide that information, now whether it comes to me or whether it comes to the sergeant, it's information that's coming into the community police and say, it will then be recorded. Uh, and if you, if you, as I said in that email, if you see that you've reported information, you've not had a response within 14 days, which is the agreed protocol, and you feel that it's not been acted upon, there is an escalation process. And that's, that's why that process is in place. So certainly, if you've got information like that, and I know you mentioned it was four years ago, but if, you, if you're having those same issues now, then email. You said it escalated, but the guy just said at the back is, your police don't know. You're not telling, not informing them about these things. So they don't even know, they didn't even know. You've got someone in, within eight months, this sergeant, he don't know about the current fire station. If you're not giving the community, stand up, say you are, but it proves from our forum meeting that you don't tell them anything. Just so I've not said, they don't tell me. They haven't told me. Eight months have been in place. So I'm just going to say, we've, we've addressed that issue, and the Chief Inspector has said he's going to pick it up with his team. It's only Monday, but yeah. he said he wasn't told, but he said he told. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We won't go back on it. Just so we hear, we hear from here different stories to what it happened in real life. And it, it's... Yeah, you're absolutely right. The, the, the consistent messaging across a force of 7,000 people isn't easy. I had to stand there this morning. And I, I had to stand there this morning with, uh, in, in, in South End and listen to a PC explaining to the Home Secretary how we haven't got enough resources. Uh, and then am I thinking that we've just hired another 505 cops. So it is complicated. Right. The, I think the other guy hasn't actually asked, answered, asked the question yet, has he? So I'm, I'm not being rude, but just trying to be a little bit even handed if that's all right. Good evening, Roger. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Um, quickly, I'm an ex police officer myself. I've just recently retired from Essex Police as a civilian working in crime management, crime bureau. So I'm a little bit out of touch exactly what's been going on crime wise, but it's a very good idea. Um, but it's been raised tonight about Corringham, the, the opportunity for, for, for a respite. But what has really affected a lot of people is, is the loss of our police stations. You know, we've heard from yourself that you know you save and save money by not keeping a building, etc., etc. But a police officer, when he was, as I found, you're driving to your police station where you patrol, you notice things on the way, you could deal with things on the way. Equally, also when you're finished, you sometimes got involved with things as you're leaving as well. 
but that would happen if you had a police station in your area. Now, this area doesn't have, don't, won't see a police officer unless there's a call. You know, if there's a reason to send a police officer, then you might see one. Same as Ockenden and Corringham, where they've lost their police stations, their police bases. So we should really, for the future, start thinking about putting police uh, patrol areas back where they used to be. Because it does give a lot of confidence to the people living in those areas that they know that they've got somewhere, a place of sanctuary they can go to, a visible sign of policing. You know, um, I understand that we share policing, especially on night duty with Brentwood and Graves, is, was that the case, not the case? And I believe that some one time we only had, say, two units, you know, patrolling the whole of Thurrock on a night duty. Now, this is okay if, if you live near Th Gray's police station, you, you get to s you, you get the impression that you're getting some policing. But not if you live down here in Tilbury or, or Ockenden or um, Corringham, because you won't see the police unless something happens. And as you described yourself, you're doing very, very well with things like rapes and burglaries and domestic violence. If it's that type of crime that happens, then you might see the police. But we're not doing so well with things like volume crime, shoplifting, um, ASB, theft from motor vehicles. That's getting pushed aside. That's being screened out. CARA, the CARA system, which you know about, CARA says no. You, you won't get investigated. You won't see a police officer. You've got store detectives that need police to arrest, you know, to deal with people that they've detained, but they're not getting the support. So our, our, our uh, local areas have been turned into places where you don't want to attend yourself because you're going to either get involved in shoplifting or witness shoplifting, witness these thefts, and nothing gets done. It spoils the area. And quickly, for, for Naz yourself, um, you can speak to us afterwards because we're, we're quite a few people here from Neighbourhood Watch tonight. And the reason why we're here tonight is because we actually support the police and we ourselves have to do a bit about preventing crime, as explained by the Chief Inspector who's joined Neighbourhood Watch also. We can communicate by WhatsApp. For your local park area, you need to get ownership of it. We've got people here tonight who clean up the areas they live in. We keep an eye on our own area, so we litter pick, we create community projects, um, so we keep our area clean, tidy, it's for us. It sends out the signal to other people that this is our area, we own it. So if you've got broken bottles, drug packets that are left, left around, or, or vapes, and all this sort of evidence of them being in control of your park, you want to get in there and clean it up. And you can't rely on the council to do it, they're, they're too busy. We have got a few people here, like myself as well, we do go around picking up the up. You've got to keep, got to keep doing it, yeah. and you're, you're let them know that's your part, not theirs. Thank you. So I'm going to respond to that first by saying thank you very much for doing what you do, and you know, neighbourhood watch I know makes a huge difference. I'm not going to quite let you get away with that, that negative tirade. <laughs> um, so yeah, policing has changed in the last few decades. I mentioned these things there are more people on patrol and certainly the effort of the last five, six years has been a strategic shift to prevention. So I, it used to be the case, I mean, nine years ago, Essex Police wrote to the local councils telling them that they were on their own with regard to antisocial behaviour. We reversed that. Antisocial behaviour is now a partnership effort and it's done through the community safety partnerships. Um, and yes, you do get diverted to the, to the council for antisocial behaviour on, online, but it is if it is a danger to the public, if it is actually in public space, then it's something the police will be picking up on. And we do it together and it's made a heck of a difference. We've worked through quite a few different sorts of crime. Um, we have used the money from the disposal of the, of, the, of the police stations to invest in the technology that's enabled us to do that. So we now can target hotspots because we know where they are, because we've got the data. We can target known offenders because we know where they live and we know you know, we can track them properly. We can actually target vulnerable people and help protect them because we know from the data sharing we're doing with social services, with health and education, who is vulnerable and who isn't. It's different from how it was when it was random patrol. Random patrol is popular, but isn't very effective. Uh, and 
the reason that we're having the success we're having is not because police officers are sitting in police stations which are fewer, but that they're out on patrol doing more. Um, I, I, I missed a sort of virtual comment there from, uh, from the lady sitting next to you. Do you need both to be really effective? We need... We need know, the, the police patrols, in fact, with yeah. all the information as well. Yes. To be really effective, you need both. We do need patrols. Absolutely, we do need patrols. And that was when you said more patrols. I was actually going to agree with you there. I don't think it's more police stations. It's more police on patrol. Uh, and I do get annoyed when I pitch up to a police station and find twenty odd delivery vehicles in the car park and wonder why they aren't out on patrol. Just say, uh, <laughs> uh, doesn't happen very often, honestly. Uh, but that, yeah, that, 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 those I think are quite important points to make. The other point to make, I think, is you highlighted a a number of sorts of crime where we are not yet being successful. Um, we are being successful with burglary, but we're not yet being successful with um, vehicle theft and with shoplifting. Um, and I think I, I kind of take encouragement from the fact that five, six years ago, people were really concerned about violent crime and people were getting hurt. And now we're talking about property crime. And we will get there. We will do that too. But it has been a question of prioritising and making a difference in key areas. And the fact that violence against the person is down as much as it is, is a real success for its police. But as you rightly point out, there is a lot more to do. Absolutely agree with you. This is the last question. Uh, if you're going to be nice, we'll let you, tell, we'll let you say something. I'll be nice. Sorry. This one's um, for our chief police officer. Uh, this is a bonus one. Last Thursday morning, Corrigan Town Centre, four police officers patrolling the town centre. Spoke to all four of them, absolutely brilliant. Glad to see him in the area. May it continue. Because just by having exactly what was being said, the visibility of a police officer says more than lots and lots of words, Gay. Chief, Chief Inspector, just just one thing. Uh, I really appreciate that we have now uh, sergeants come to our forum. It was a long, long gap uh, for that to happen, and we used to have that on a regular basis. Can we continue with that? Because, as you say, they come along, they get to know the people, the issues in the area. It all helps. Sometimes passions are a little bit strong. I know that from, from my, uh, my, I know, <laughs> my experience of your forum. <laughs> but the chair kept it in order, didn't he? Uh, uh, um, no, he was off there. <laughs> <laughs> just, just to respond to that, that point, um, certainly since coming in, that was one of the, uh, one of the things that I looked at. Uh, so going back to, to your point around officers patrolling, um, we regularly look at how we can get the most officers out on patrol, whether uh, and how, how we remove some of the uh, workload that they have that's preventing them from being out on the streets. So, for example, dealing with prisoners, dealing with uh, um, uh, scene guards, hospital guards, things like that. How we can best utilise all our resources in order that we put more officers out on patrol. And um, as a result of the work that we've done over the last, certainly the last uh, 11 months that I've been the district commander, we, we now get to the point where we are Got, we've got officers going out with patrol pans, uh, ensuring that we are meeting those response times for emergency calls, but also being visible in those communities to tackle that, those crimes. Using data, we are very data driven, and this is why it comes back to the point I made earlier about reporting crime, because we are data driven. We look at our hotspots, we look at the crime types, we, we utilise that, utilize that information to base those officers within those hotspots to tackle those crime times when they're not responding to emergency calls. Um, your point about the community forums, that's something that I've already taken and addressed and, and certainly uh, uh, 
you won't have a police officer every forum every month, but uh, what I've uh, outlined as my expectation is there will be a, for, uh, a police officer quarterly at forums because it is about engaging with the community, listening to what the uh, concerns are in the community to tackle those issues. Because I recognise that members of the public don't always report crime to the police. They will report, uh, sometimes you'll get information at a community forum that we've never ever been aware of. So it's about utilising all the information stream the work that I've done with the councillors around uh, improving and enhancing the contact between the councillors and police. So, for, for uh, those that are not council members, uh, what we what we've implemented in Farrock is that there is now a surgery, where myself and the community policing inspector goes to every three months at the council building for a full uh, full council uh, uh, meeting or full chamber meeting, and, and we listen to those councillors around some of the uh, complaints that they've had from constituents. That the things that are affecting them within those areas and when we take that on board we go back we look at whether or not that's been reported to us as a first step if it has what, what why we've not tackled it if it hasn't we go back and say well it needs to be reported but this is what we're doing in the interim but we need that information coming into us because as i said right the way through tonight it's all about what we know we can only react to what we know and if, if things are not being reported some of the the common um common things that we've had come back to us is <coughs> oh, I'll put it on Facebook. Mm. I'll put it on Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, um, we, we, unfortunately, we are not the Facebook police or the Twitter police or the social media police. If it's not come through us through the official channels of actually reporting it, and, and uh, we spoke about online tonight, we spoke about 101 system, but you, the Gray's Police Station is open uh, and you can walk into Gray's Police Station and speak to uh, one of our uh, station reception officers and report crime o over the counter as well. So, so th there are a multitude of ways in which you can report crime, but for some reason there, there, I suspect there is an under-reporting within Farrakh and that's one of the things that I want to address because we can't solve the problems if we don't know them. So um, go back to your point, yes you will have a police officer coming every three months I'm at a meeting with um, uh, with the the overarching forum next week. Yeah, yeah so I, I I'm going to that and, and looking and listening to how best we can enhance what we're doing um, to to try and improve that two way uh, two way uh, conversation. Thank you. Oh, you, there's a gentleman there who hasn't actually hasn't asked a question. He's just put his hand up. So, I, I this hey, sorry, of course. Sorry, I didn't see you over there. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm Josie, a chapel coordinator. Um, I spoke to Sarah way before Christmas last year um, about uh, more street lights down in Chapel. Uh, I don't know how familiar I'm with it. Uh, Ruskin Road. This is. Thank you, Sarah. Um, no, but please continue, and I'll listen. Listen to what you um, what you're saying. So I'm not only just thinking about everyone else, I'm thinking about more about everyone else that's got children. Um, considering it's getting later, about <coughs> half three now, the kids are going to be doing after school clubs and whatever else. The thing is, Ruskin Road is pretty much dark. You can't see nothing down there. You have to literally get your phone out or use a torch or something like that to be able to see what's down there. Is there any sort of way of getting more light down there? Because I've had so many residents say to me, we need more lights. I can, I'm only a one person, I can't do much. Yep, certainly. Um, you're going to hate my answer partly, which is obviously that forms part of a different part of the council, the, the highways team and the infrastructure team there. However, I do know those individuals and I can take that away from this meeting. So by all means, I'll, I'm here representing the Community Safety Partnership. Um, obviously, there is a level of uh, prevention work that the Community Safety Partnership do. However, what you're talking about there is, is, is highway furniture and infrastructure. So what I'll do is I'll take that away um, and I'll get a, a representative from that, year, that department within the council to make contact with you. There is... Um There is a resident that's near um, the old clinic. Um, they they speak a different language, but there is someone there that can speak English. Um, I've recommended them to speak to Councillor Sarah, uh, but I don't know if they've done it or not. But it's um, not even halfway up Ruskin. It's on the right. 
there's a, I think it's a white door. Um, if you want to speak to them, they're more than happy to speak to you. Okay, um, I probably need a little bit more information, but what we can do is we'll discuss after this meeting and, uh, and we'll try and pinpoint it. Um, and like I say, although that's not something that is even within my gift at this precise moment, um, I will take it away and talk to the highways and infrastructure team to, to see where we can go with street lighting, etc. Thank you. Any news on these, or have you charged anyone with these gas canisters that have been dumped all around the streets? But not small silver ones, the large ones. I think there was banned from November. I've been, you know, we, we did the first successful prosecution in the country for nitrous oxide the other day. <laughs> so it's brand new legislation, uh, and I am very pleased to tell you that, uh, not here in Thurrock, but very pleased to tell you that overall in the county, Essex was the first police force in the country to successfully secure a prosecution for nitrous oxide possession. Um, a guy from Brentwood uh, who was uh, investigated found to be in possession of other uh, Class A and B drugs and has been uh, successfully prosecuted. So it started. But that's, as you know, it's fresh legislation. So at the moment, they used to go into like car parks, but now they're just driving on the streets, throwing them out. Yeah, I, I know. And, the vehicle hits and they're the very heavy things. I, I, uh, when I do the zipics around my little neck of the woods, you, you do find them tucked under and hedges and things, and they're pretty heavy. That's a lot. So I'm glad we've got the new legislation. We are implementing it here in this county, perhaps faster than others are. I think we've probably... Go on then. <laughs> just to be Question. I Just following off this guy, the anti-social behaviour bit, we had it, you come down to Bolsonaro Park, jump through hoops, try to help us, everything was great and we loved you. Then what happened? Our accounts have got resources to help you, so your hands are tied on a lot of anti-social behaviour because our accounts have got that money. So I thought you said we were going to say something positive. It's a double. It is because he he was <laughs> he was amazing. He helped us, and we went, well, yeah, everything's great. And then sorry, we don't have money. So he, he's up. In a lot of cases, being a red against a brick wall, and so it's it's hard to anti-social behaviour. He wants security, and then they don't give the money. So. It's We'll, uh, we, we will continue through the Community Safety Partnership and I will continue to fund the Community Safety Partnership as Thank the you. PFCC office, is, office does yeah. and we'll try and make sure that we can do the best job that we possibly can to address the issue that you rightly raised there. I'm going to draw a line under it now because uh, I think we're, we're, uh, we've got to the end of our time. Thank you so much indeed for attending. Really uh, value your contributions. Uh, we'll definitely follow up on the stuff that we've raised. Uh, and. Uh, have a safe trip home and don't get too cold. Thank you.